What's up, minions? Lex Deville here, and in this video, we are going to be exploring some cheat code words that you can use in your proposals to help you stand out and attract the exact right clients for you. If that's something you're interested in, stick around. Hey minions, if you're new to the channel and you like what I have to say, then be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Only do this if you like what I have to say and if you want to hear more about freelancing, entrepreneurship, and personal world domination. For those who don't know me, I'm Lex DeVille and on this channel we help you escape corporate prison and build a freelance empire. We share lots of freelance tips and tutorials, so if you're new, consider subscribing. In our most recent video, I have no idea what we talked about, so we're just gonna, I'm gonna point to it up here, and if you want to watch that video, you can, you can click on it, I'll add it later. Uh, before we get started, I also want to mention that I launched two new courses this month, both on Udemy. One is a, a freelance collections course, teaching you how to collect on non-paying clients. The other course is Advanced Upwork Profiles 2. And that one shows you how to rank at the top of search results on the first page for your specialized search term, and also how to rank on the first page across multiple search terms at the same time, which of course increases the chances of you getting found, which increases the chances of you getting invited to jobs, which increases the chances of you getting hired and making money. Those are down in the description below. This video is about cheat code words that you can say in your proposal, in your Upwork proposals that are gonna help you stand out. Personally, I use these every single time. I mean, you should be using these based on the industry you're in. Of course, we cannot explore every single possible industry on the planet, but I'm gonna dive into several industries today, several common industries, and kind of just give you a general overview of some of the words, and then maybe put out a, a at least the basics of how you can expand on this exploration of words and find these right words for yourself for whatever niche or industry you're in. Hopefully I can kind of lay out a blueprint like that for you today. So. Cheat code words are words that you, when you use these in your proposal, they tell clients that you know your shit. And not just that you know your shit, but that you know specifically things about this particular industry. So I'm just going to flip over to a screen recording and to show you that way so that you can just see it right on the screen and that way there's no confusion about anything going forward. So let's talk cheat codes. You are, let's say you're searching for a crypto writing job. You come across this job here. They're looking for, they need a writer to create an article on crypto that is very SEO centric to help drive organic traffic. What are you going to say to this client that is going to make your proposal stand out from everyone else? You can, of course, use you focus. You can, of course, talk about the client and their problem and, and you know, just your writing services. But everybody's going to be doing that. So you need to figure out what words can I say that are going to stand out to this client. That research, the research into figuring out what the words are that you wanna say, starts in the job post. You start looking through the job post and looking to find out if there are any cheat code words. That would be, these are gonna be the words that people in this industry use a lot. They use these words over and over all the time. And when you use those same words, you are going to sound like someone who knows what they're talking about. You're going to sound like an expert in this space. But it's not enough to just use those words. You also need to know the, the appropriate way to use those words. So you can't just talk about the blockchain without knowing what you're talking about. You will have to do a little bit of digging to get that information because if you try to talk about it without knowing what you're talking about, you're going to find that you come across like a fool and people aren't going to hire you. So we start here. We look for keywords. What's a keyword? Crypto. We know that's a cheat code word for sure because that is a job that we're applying to. I didn't really see a whole lot of other cheat code words when I looked through here, but there were a couple. So the main ones that jumped out to me were cryptocurrency. So you can use those two words together in your proposals. There's also Bitcoin, Ethereum. Those are two really big ones that you're going to want to talk about. You don't necessarily have to mention Bitcoin and Ethereum. I think that a lot of freelancers might gravitate to those. Those are just an example. I think that people will talk about Bitcoin and Ethereum because those are high-level terms within the industry that a lot of people are going to know about. So you don't really find much here, but you know that you need to. You are dealing in crypto, so maybe you go over to some place where they talk about crypto. And I've already got this other page up on OpenSea that's actually talking about NFTs, but it's related because it's all related to blockchain technology. Crypto is blockchain technology. Uh, NFTs are blockchain technology, and so. What you would want to do is you want to go to Google and maybe search out 
something related to crypto. What is cryptocurrency? That would be the most simplest starting point and see what pops up, see what websites pop up. I've got this blog up from OpenSea and I thought it was just a simple one that I found, but this was the non-fungible token Bible. So when you're applying to crypto gigs, since they really fall, they really fall within the blockchain space, any word that applies to the blockchain space is going to jump out to clients. So non-fungible token or NFTs. Those words are valuable to people who deal in cryptocurrencies because uh, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency, but NFTs are built on the Ethereum blockchain. So Ethereum is actually a blockchain as far as I understand it, unless I'm completely off about that. But Ethereum is a blockchain, NFTs are built on the Ethereum blockchain. So if you know that, that gives you an edge up. It makes you look a little bit wiser than other freelancers who are applying to this gig. So if you were to read to read through just a simple blog post on the NFT or this guide on OpenSea, um, you would start to see all sorts of cheat code words. So blockchain is a cheat code word because we're talking about that. And you can talk about collectibles when you're talking about NFTs. These are cheat code words that are going to jump out. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see their table of contents. Let's just look at what might be some examples of cheat code words in here. So blockchain-based non-fungible tokens, we already talked about those, any of these words, standardization, interoperability, tradability, liquidity, immutability, programmability, these are all going to be highly specialized words relating to the blockchain technology. ERC-721, ERC-1155, those would also be valuable to somebody who's talking about crypto. Um, you would have to figure out how you would weave that into your proposal for them, but you want to show that you know about these things. Uh, knowing about on-chain and off-chain technology, knowing about metadata, those could be valuable to someone who deals in crypto. Centralized servers and decentralization, those are going to be keywords. Uh, IPFS could be a keyword. Knowing about these different things, crypto kitties, knowing about that. Somebody who doesn't know anything about crypto and NFTs probably doesn't know about crypto kitties. So if you start mentioning that, it just gives you a little bit of an edge. You can talk about virtual worlds. That's a little bit more high level. You want to find the stuff that is a little bit deeper within the world. So talking about minting, that's that could be a a uh, cheat code word for you. So I'll just put some on the screen, what I think would be a good set of cheat code words. And uh, those words for me are gonna be cryptocurrency, blockchain, NFTs, DeFi, uh, ledger, decentralization, record of transactions, Bitcoin, Ethereum, altcoin, meme coin, mining, on-chain, off-chain, Oracle, smart contracts, ERC-721, ERC-1155. These are just some examples of words. You can see when you pull them together, if you put these words on the screen and somebody asks you, what are these words? And maybe you know a little bit about the blockchain. So you say, you would say, these are all words relating to blockchain technologies. And that is right. That is what they form. You wouldn't say these are words relating to ice cream because they're not related to ice cream at all. So you can see how they're much more related. They're around a centralized theme, which is kind of funny because they're all about decentralization, but they're around the central theme of blockchain. Let's look at another example. And the next example is going to be in the legal industry. Let's go over to my profile here and type in legal writer. And we'll just see what pops up there. Okay, so we've got something here for criminal defense. We can just pop that open. If you are writing in these spaces, of course, you probably already know some things about the space. You probably already know a little bit about legal stuff if you're writing in the legal space. But you may not know that you need to use these words in your bio. So that is really important. Or not in your bio, in your profile. Not in your profile, in your proposal. Jesus. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying, but anyway, here we are. We have this. So we've got, this is for the legal space. Criminal defense paralegal needed to research, prepare a motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute. You've got a couple of high level cheat code words here. Criminal defense, paralegal, research and prepare. Those are high level cheat code words. Those are good to use, but really good cheat code words would be if you knew how to use motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute, or if you could explain how you knew what that was. If you knew what motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute was, then you could talk about that. So the first thing to know is that this is a cheat code word because it is a specialty word. It is something that really only somebody who deals in legal stuff on a regular basis is going to know. And if you can use that word competently, if you can give an example, if you can tell a story, if you can share something about that word in a competent way, 
then it is going to make you stand out from everyone else because everyone else is going to, they might say that they're a criminal defense writer or that they were a paralegal, but they don't talk about motions to dismiss for failure to prosecute. If you were able to say, yeah, I've written three of those, or if you were able to tell a story about that, or if you if you could tell a story about motion, a motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute in a way that doesn't even involve talking about past clients or results or anything, that's going to be enough probably to get you to that next stage and get you the interview. So if you wanted to find out more words like this, we might go to Google and type in criminal defense attorney and just see what pops up. Maybe there will be an ad or something. The main difference, okay, the main difference between, well, that's not an attorney website. I want to find an attorney website because I feel like that's going to be the best way for me to find the information I'm looking for. Here's one called CP Law, and this is in my local area. Let's just read through this and see what we find here. Maybe we can find some uh, words to branch out into and explore. If you have been accused of a serious crime, accused would be a cheat code word. Crime might be a cheat code word here too, but that's a little more high level. You must act immediately. Call the attorneys at Check It, Polly, Bay, and Morgan LLC, and we will explain to you all of the available options considering the circumstances of your particular case as well as the law. For some, it is most important to simply move past the case and be done with it. For the majority of people, however, much more is at stake, blah, blah, blah. We don't really see any good words there. DWI, drug charges, there's one of them that I mentioned before, domestic violence, robbery, burglary, those are all criminal violations. Violations could be one, ordinance could be one, municipal, that's a good one. If you talk about municipal anything or municipal ordinance, then that's going to be good words that you could use. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Let's go to another page. Maybe we can find a better page for their process. On the home page here, more than 100 years of continuous law experience. You can see they use that one. Provides the highest quality legal services. So you can say legal services. That could be a cheat code word. Bankruptcy, criminal defense, family law and divorce, probate. Okay, so here's a good example of something that you could do. Cheat code words. Any of these would be cheat code words. So if you are applying to a criminal defense uh, writing job in the legal space and you've only written for bankruptcy attorneys, that's totally fine. Mention that you've written for a bankruptcy attorney, and that is going to be applicable to criminal defense attorneys. Or if you've only written for family law and divorce, but you're trying to apply to a personal injury lawyer, it's fine. It's all law. These are all going to be cheat code words because family law and divorce, while it is different from personal injury, much of the process that somebody goes through is the same. The process for uh, filing a case is still the same with the court. The process of paying filing fees is the same. A court date gets set, and plaintiffs and defendants might show up. And in a family law case or a divorce case, you're going to have one party who's the plaintiff and one party who's the defendant. Uh, plaintiff, defendant, and party are all three cheat code words. In a personal injury case, you're going to have a plaintiff and a defendant as well. And you're going to go in front of a judge in both of these cases. You're going to have hearings. So these are all key words. And I'll give you some more up on the screen. So legal, law, law firm, attorney, judge, court case, hearing, trial, court date, defendant, plaintiff, motion to dismiss, docket, charges, prosecution, paralegal, filing fees, court cost, process server, summons. These are just some of the words that... that if you put these words together, they form this idea of something legal. This applies to legal stuff as opposed to crypto stuff from before. And you can separate these out into different like boxes in your mind. And because you can separate them out, whenever you start talking about these words, they become cheat code words because other freelancers are not talking about them. They're not doing the research into them. You start talking about these things, and all of a sudden, the client puts you in the legal box. They say, this is a legal freelancer versus all the other freelancers who are just regular freelancers, and that's what we want to achieve here. Now, there is a challenge for you because you may not know what all of these words mean. You may not know what motion to dismiss means. So what you are going to do is you're going to go over to google.com or whatever search engine I prefer for different search engines these days, but I'm using this one for ease of access. What is a motion to dismiss? That's where you'd find this. Law, Cornell, EDU, click on the first result that comes up. A motion to dismiss is a formal request for a court to dismiss a case. Easy breezy. Now you know exactly what that is. Now you can explain it. You can talk about how you might write about it. You can use it competently within your proposal because you understand at a basic level what that is and they wanted a motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute so we could even go back and probably type in that what is a motion to dismiss for failure to prosecute 
Order dismissing case for failure to prosecute. This might tell us. That does not tell us anything. That's a big mess. Okay, we may not be able to get that one without doing some extra digging. And I probably wouldn't go that deep into it because I just don't have time for digging super deep into this stuff. I just want enough. Just enough to get a response. And it doesn't look like we're going to get that without going much deeper into this. So let's try one more before we call it a day. And then I think I'll cut it off there because this video is going to get kind of long. Okay, so for this last one, I popped up another window here. We're going to do the spiritual niche. And I like this one because it's it's hard for people to grasp what spiritual means a lot of the time, but you can still pull the words together just fine. Now, what's funny is this person is looking for a website copywriting for spiritual readings. Um, she says that she's looking for deep and meaningful words to be expressed onto her website to her customer so her customer base can grow. And she needs this because she struggles with the words to say and finds it hard to express herself over text and writing. So it's funny because we're trying to pull this together to show her that we are the exact right person to do this. So we need to know about spiritual words. What are we looking for? Well, she listed her website up here, so we can go ahead and click on that. And maybe that'll be the right place for us to start. That's going to tell us a lot about what would be what she thinks are the right kinds of words. So we start up here with the website name, Summer's Intuition. We're already talking about a season, summer, and intuition. That is something that comes from inside, and it is from within the body or within the mind, maybe within the gut. You can think about that in different ways, but we're talking about intuition. So keep that word in mind. That is a cheat code word. You deserve clarity, another cheat code word. These are things that people who are into spirituality, uh, they want, they like, they think about. These might be tarot cards, and this is the lover, so maybe she's doing divination. She might be doing fortune telling. Um, Let's scroll down here. Okay, so she's got tarot card readings, psychic readings, palm readings. You might want to know a little bit about these things. And, of course, you can click learn more on any of them, and she's going to tell you a little bit about them by because this is a product that you can buy. $89. Detailed instructions will be emailed to you once you pay. Okay, are you curious about your life path? Life path, there's a keyword. Looking to, we should be writing these down. Where is my notepad? Let me get this over. Okay, so, so far we have summer we have intuition we have clarity life path and looking to know what your life is all about want to figure out what you can do better to align with the divine align there's a keyword divine there's a keyword understand your energy there's a keyword and take in the wisdom of the elders so we can use wisdom i wouldn't say elders because i think that's too that's too um, too specific maybe for spirituals um, you might use it if you were applying to this specific gig since this is her website she seems to know what that means but other people may not know what that means so you don't want to go too specific or you could lose people and it will be hard for you to figure out what they're talking about in the first place or maybe you just want to experience your first psychic reading so psychic and psychic reading would both be cheat code words if any of these fit then psychic reading may be for you okay let's go back now uh, tarot card reading we know that tarot cards, if you have any experience with tarot cards, that could be uh, fortune telling, we said. These are words that are not on our site, but they are related in my mind. So fortune telling, divination. The tarot is a deck of 78 cards, each with its own imagery, symbolism, and story. The major arcana. Okay, there's a good one. Major arcana. That's going to be a good cheat code word. That's very specific to tarot, and only somebody who knows a little bit about tarot will know anything about the major arcana. But you can research that easily, and we can just prove that by going over to Google. What is major arcana in tarot? You can see Google's already populating that. So major arcana tarot card meanings. You can pop up this first uh, result here, and hopefully their website doesn't take forever. The major arcana tarot cards represent the life lessons, karmic influences, and the big archetypal themes that are influencing your life. Get out of here. And your soul's journey to enlightenment. Okay, a whole bunch of cheat code words right here. So let's go ahead and write some of those down because these are going to be super helpful. We've got uh, karmic influences, life lessons, archetypal themes. We've got soul journey and enlightenment all right that's enough words and we're just going to pop these up on the screen now and see if you can start to pull together this idea of spiritual summer intuition clarity life path align divine energy wisdom psychic reading tarot cards fortune telling divination major arcana 
karmic influences, life lessons, archetypal themes, soul, journey, enlightenment. Okay, think about those words now when you put them together. Like individually, summer, that could mean a lot of things. That brings a lot of different pictures to your mind. But summer combined with intuition, clarity, and divination, those start to pull together a theme of spirituality. And when you start to pull together these themes in your words, and you don't, you don't need to use all of these words. I should probably have mentioned that earlier on because half of you have already dropped off of this video. You don't have to use all of these words. We're just picking and choosing a few. We just need a few. So from this, I might talk about, if I were going to talk, apply to a spiritual gig, I would definitely want to use clarity. I would want to use journey. I would want to use soul. I would want to use energy. I would probably use light, um, highest good. These are some of the words that I've seen. So how might I write this in a sentence? I'm going to try and come up with something off the top of my head. Uh, hi there. You... Saw you need a spiritual writer. I write for spiritual brands regularly. I'm just making up a proposal as I go. If the reason clients hire, oops, now I'm getting too far over. Let me see if I can open this up a little bit. One of the reasons clients like to work with me is because I bring them clarity along their journey into and I support their soul work as they as they I don't know as they go forward toward their highest good when you work with me, you can expect that I will help bring a light flowing energy into your life so that you can focus on your own <laughs> karmic influences while growing your business kind regards okay there is a proposal lex deville we'll put that at the end hi there so he needs a spiritual writer i write for spiritual brands regularly one of the reasons clients like to work with me is because i bring them clarity along their journey so there's clarity and journey and i support there's another word their soul work as they go forward toward their highest good there's that word highest good when you work with me you can expect that i will help you bring a light there's light flowing that's another cheat code word but it's not listed up here energy there's one of our cheat code words into your life so that you can focus on your own karmic influences there's a specific cheat code word while growing your business so that's the outcome that they ultimately want is they want all of the spiritual stuff and they also want to grow their business and so these words all come together to form this idea of I'm a spiritual freelancer. Other freelancers are just regular freelancers. We're putting ourselves in the spiritual box. And by doing that, we're separating ourselves out from other people. We are grabbing the client's attention because even though these words may not make sense to you, they may not sound good to you. To somebody who is into spirituality, these words jump off the, the page to them. They say, oh my gosh, this person gets me. They get me. And that is what we want. We want to be categorized in the spirituality box or the legal box or the crypto, uh, the cryptocurrency box or the blockchain box, whatever. And when you do that, then you are going to have a much easier time getting hired. And especially when you do that and combine it with all of the other training from my channel. Now, one thing that you need to remember about this is that you cannot just use these words. I just made some crap up off the top of my head, and maybe this would work for the spiritual energy because they tend to kind of go along with vague ideas like that. But you might want to do a little bit of research. What is karmic influences? You might want to look that up and see if you can find something about it so that you can talk and speak competently about it in your proposals. Because if you recall from past trainings, the main thing with your proposals is you have to remember the three C's. So you have to demonstrate competence so that clients will feel confident in you, which ultimately leads them to feeling comfortable moving forward with you. Competence, confidence, 
comfort. That is how you get clients to take that next step with you and to interview you. And this is just one more way of building up and getting in rapport with clients and showing that you are like this client, that you understand this client, that you are an expert in this space. And when you do that, you are going to get hired way more often. So those are the cheat code words that you can use to help you stand out, help you attract client attention in your proposals, separate yourself, put you apart from all of the other freelancers who are applying to the same gig, saying the same shit that you're saying. You're going to be saying something different now because you've done your homework and you found the words that are going to give you the cheat code to uh, attract clients easily and get them to want to know more about you. Use those codes. And uh, if you have questions about this, drop them in a comment down below. If you have like a an industry that you want me to help you figure out some cheat codes on, you know, you could always put that in a comment and maybe I can drop some code words for you, or you can go do your research on those on your own, whatever floats your boat. Uh, make sure you go check out those two new courses, freelance collections and advanced upper profiles volume two. Those are going to give you huge advantages on uh, Upwork as well as just in freelancing in general, if you've ever had to deal with non-paying clients. So those are down in the description. I'm Lex DeVille. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.